Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Good morning, church. Oh, does anybody here in Minnesota feel like they want to just get in the car and drive to Florida? Anyone? Hey, hey, got a few. Do I need to step back here? Because I'm a little hot on the microphone. So I do love a road trip. So I love the fact that our Vision Driven Life series has a little bit of a road trip theme to it. And um, so two weeks ago, we talked about God's unstoppable vision, finding God's unstoppable vision for our lives. Last week, we talked about letting Jesus take the wheel. What is ours to do? What is God's to do? And today, we're going to look at the importance of who is in the car with us on this journey. So, um, so much happens when you're trapped in a car with someone for long periods of time. And um, yeah, so, and we're, you know, doing this life together. So, so I have this friend, her name is Mindy, and she may or may not be in the room right now, but we've been friends since college. And uh, one day, back in the day, we were in the car together, and I was singing along to the radio. I was like jamming out to my tunes. And Mindy very sweetly said to me, Kelly, who sings this song? And I said, whatever late 90s artist it was. And she goes, let's keep it that way. (laughs) So (laughs) I love taking trips with people when you can have fun. You can be real. You can be honest. You can tell someone, "Um, you're singing a little out of tune today. And uh, that's still one of my favorite moments with my friend. So uh, we're going to talk about who is helping us along our journey today. And in any good road trip, you need certain people in the car with you. You need the person who's gonna bring the snacks. You need the navigator. You need the life of the party. You need the person who is good in a crisis. You need the planner, you need the driver, and so many more. And it's the same with pursuing a vision. We need people around us to help us reach our goals. This is why groups like Weight Watchers and Alcoholics Anonymous have been so successful. Or joining a fitness challenge at a gym. Powerful things happen when you go after a goal with a group. I was reading about a study of veterans who had gone through an addiction um, recovery program with the VA And they did a study afterwards and checked in with them at 12 months and at 18 months after completing the program. And they found that that 20 to 25% of those who did not do any kind of AA or similar program um, were still um, sober and abstinent from alcohol at 12 months and at 18 months. But of those that were a part of AA or some similar group, it was 50%. So it was a huge difference was made when you're part of a group or a system or a, you know, the people that surround you to help you get to your goal. And overcoming addiction is huge and it is hard. And, um, And AA has shown that being with people who understand and aren't going to judge and are walking along with you and you have someone to call makes a huge, huge difference in that journey. So the same could apply to any. They, someone um, has a vision to be free from alcohol. You know, they are reaching towards that vision and AA is helping them. And in the same way, we can help each other towards the vision that God has for our lives. So let me ask you, who is in the car with you? What people do we need on this journey towards our vision? Moving towards our vision is like driving in a caravan. We need three types of people. We need the people that go before us. We need the people who come behind us. 
and we need the people who are beside us. So you need someone to follow, someone who's gone before you, someone who is just far enough ahead that you can still see them so you know which way to go. Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get in trouble. Look for people who are what you want to become. Let me say that again. Look for people who are what you want to become. We are friends with a couple who are a little older than us, Catalina and I. Their youngest child is just a little bit older than our oldest. And they have a great marriage. They have amazing kids. We admire them so much. And we've watched them and we've asked them questions. And we don't get to spend a ton of time with them right now because church planting is busy. But we used to, and it was so very formative in our marriage and in our parenting. And now they are part of a marriage, a marriage mentoring program at their church, and I think that is so perfect for them. But I'm so thankful to have people in our lives that we can look to. If your vision is financial freedom, look for people who become financially free. If your vision is a strong marriage, look for couples who are living that out. If your vision is to have kids of strong character, find people who have raised kids who love and serve God as adults. If your vision is to be a great leader, learn about great leaders. Another way of saying this is find mentors and coaches. In this church planning journey, we've been connected with so many amazing pastors through the Association of Related Churches and other. We have people who we Zoom with, who we message on Voxer, who we text, who we messenger, people in other states who are ahead of us, and we can call them and we can say, we don't know what we're doing. And we get encouraged and we get challenged and we get inspired. And I don't think we could have done it, the, gotten this far without them. And I know we're not gonna get to the next level without them. Jesus called his disciples to do this. The first disciples he called were Simon, Peter, and Andrew. And in Matthew 4, 19 through 20, Jesus called out to them, come and follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Who is going before you? Who are you following? The second group of people we need are those who are coming behind us. Those same disciples of Jesus that Jesus called to follow him, he then sent to lead others. Another example of this is found in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 and 7. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you've become an example to all the believers in Greece throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. These believers imitated Paul and became the example to other believers. You drive differently when you know someone is following you, don't you? Be someone that the person behind you can follow. You are not better than the person behind you, but you're just a little further along the road. If you're a parent, your kids are behind you. And as they grow, they seem to move closer and closer. And if we do our job right, then someday they'll be ahead of us, right? But for right now, like, they are following. And I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of our iKids volunteers because those kids need more than just their parents to follow. And many times, I'm sure it feels like herding cats more than being followed, 
but you get to see glimpses of, of their character being built, of them understanding God's word, of them, just the joy that comes from being with God's people. And you are people of strong faith and character and integrity who sow into them. And the same goes with our youth. They need people to follow that are not their parents because as you know, if you are the parent of a teenager, you know nothing. <laughs> so if you help with the youth, you can be people of strong, again, strong faith, character and integrity who sow into the youth to become the people, and we can become people that they want to follow. And I'm so, so thankful. The third type of people that we need on this journey are people who walk beside us. I call these my peeps, my people, my gang, my girls, friends and, well, not all girls, I mean boys too, friends and co-laborers. And we can think that we are the only people who struggle with something until we get around others who are caring and safe and suddenly it's not so lonely and isolating. I can see that you're just as messed up as I am. And you struggle too, and then together we can move towards our goals. Hebrews 10, 24. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Why is it not going? Okay, sorry. <laughs> iPad error. Um, acts, could you put that up again, Nathan? Thanks, going back. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. I am going to park on the importance of the church here for a little while because, well, we are in church and we are the church. So one of our core values at Influence is connection. And the way we say that is be the church. Simply put, be the church. One of my absolute favorite passages of scripture is a description of the early church, and we're going to focus on two verses today. Acts 2, 46 and 47. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. So that was like the big the big group, that was like the Sunday church, right? They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. So they broke bread together, which means they ate together in, in their homes. So that's like small groups. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I love that, and the whole passage is amazing. It talks about, about being taught by the apostles. It talks about miracles and wonders being performed. It talks about the generosity of the church. But I just wanted to focus on those two things that were so important, that gathering together as a church body and also the gathering in homes with smaller groups of people. Um, so what is the purpose of the church? First, one purpose is connection. We are built for relationship. We are built to love God and love others. And church is this amazing, intentional way to bring those together. I mean, they should be integrated in every part of our lives, but when we gather as the church, we are gathering as people who love God and people who love each other. And it's meshed and, very, and we're practicing, right? Second, discipline and structure. You will not move towards your goals without discipline and structure. I think Kathleen mentioned this quote last week or the week before, but I'm going to say it again by Craig Grishel. Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. The discipline of consistently going to church 
consistently serving, consistently meeting with other believers will help move you towards God's vision for your life. That simple discipline. Accountability is the next one. And again, think AA or WW. This is CC, Christ Church. We, um, willpower only gets you so far. But accountability supercharges your willpower. So we hold each other up in accountability. Next, grace and forgiveness. As we experience grace and forgiveness among each other, our understanding of God's grace and forgiveness for us is deepened. We, can, we, are, lear we are learning that it's okay to make mistakes because learning takes lots of mistakes. So the church is made to express grace and forgiveness. And finally, support and strengthening. When we link arms as a church, we are stronger. Sometimes we support others, and sometimes we need to be supported. But a lot of times, it's a little of both. Support and strengthening. And all of these things cannot happen in one hour on a Sunday. As good as I think our services are, Real growth and health and love, and love, the love we read about in Acts and the early church comes from sharing life together, making time for one another, breaking bread together, or eating tacos together. This is why our biggest goal for this first quarter of 2022 at Influence is to get some small groups started. And we want to help all of us to be the church. The greatest growth that you, okay, I can't read my notes. The greatest growth for you will happen in the context of community. It will. We are gonna talk more about groups in the coming weeks, especially at the dream night. Please, please, please come to dream night. It is gonna be fun and amazing. If something is stirred inside of you when we talk about groups and you might think, oh, I might like to lead one or I might like to open my home and be a host for one, come and talk to Catalina or I because we, we, want, we know we'll start small, but we want to get people connected. And uh, we're going to have an info meeting in the next couple weeks for anybody interested so we can get you that information. So, okay, enough commercials. So what are, you, what are we going to do when we leave here today? What practical steps can you take to make the best road trip ever towards a vision-driven life? So I'm going to give you a few things to do after you leave here. Number one, evaluate who is in the car with you. Who are your people who are surrounding you? Who is before you? who is behind you, and who is beside you. Second, appreciate those that you have because they are a gift to you. And a little appreciation goes a long ways. Third, search out those you are missing. Do you need a mentor or a friend? Do you need someone to look up to you? Search them out and invite them to be a part of your life, your group, this church. That'd be good. Next, make church a priority for you and your family. This is a little bit like preaching to the choir because you are here. Good job. But I'm just, I want to encourage you and say, like, I'm the type of person that's like, oh, maybe you could come if you want to. But no, no, let me, this is, this is for real. Make it a priority. It will make a difference in your life. I promise you. And finally, be part of a small group. Find your people. Find your people. And it doesn't necessarily have to be with the church here. We're part of a business group that I think is like a small group. Like it's networking Right, Jeff? 
It's networking, but everybody cares so much about each other. It is amazing. I love those people. And so there's lots of opportunities. And really, to make it a small group that will help you um, grow spiritually, you need one of three things, one or more. You need worship, you need Bible, or you need prayer. Just add one in and see what happens. Like, you get together with your friends for coffee. And, okay, well, let's just take five minutes at the end and pray together. Oh, it will do amazing things, seriously. Um, so, I want to end by reading Ephesians 4, 16. It's a very inspiring verse to me. It's talking about Jesus. Jesus makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. We want to help you find your own special work, like this verse was talking about, so that the body together can grow healthy and full of love. So I just want to say thank you for allowing us to be in the car with you. It is our greatest hope that each Sunday or each time we gather together that we would take one step closer to Jesus. So wherever you are on this journey, Jesus invites us to follow him more and more closely. So jump in the car. Join the caravan. Caravan, Let's get to this vision-driven life. If you would like to take a step closer to Jesus today, I'd ask that you would just pray with me. Let's bow our, our heads. I almost said bow our eyes. That too. Bow our heads and close our eyes. And just take a moment within yourself to, um, to just pray this prayer with me. Father God, I want your vision for my life. I've tried it my way, and it's not working. I put my trust in you, and I will follow. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me, and to live for you. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, and it's the first time you said a prayer like that, or maybe it's the first time in a long time, we as a church, we want to be the church. We want to surround you and help you on the journey. So there's a connect card on your chairs, and if you would fill that out, or if you're watching online, fill out the connect form at influence.church, and we'll reach out to you and help. We have a book we want to give you, that is excellent and we want to just be able to connect and see how we can support you. So let's, we're gonna worship together one more time. We're gonna seal this into our hearts. We're gonna be the church and worship together. So I'd invite you to stand up and let's just take a few more moments.